If you want some coins for the new Road to the Final promo, check out MMOXP.com. Their link is down in the description. They're very fast, they're very cheap, they're very reliable. And if you use my code REMATE, you can get 5% off your order. This supports the channel greatly, and I do very much appreciate it. So what's up guys, my name's Ash and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video guys, I've got some custom tactics and player instructions for my favourite wide formation in FIFA 23, which is the 4-3-3-4, also known as the 4-3-3 attack. Now this is good if you're struggling with narrow formations or you need something a bit different against those guys that are always super compact and narrow. And yeah, just before we get into today's video guys, I'd very much appreciate it if you could drop it a thumbs up as that does really help with the YouTube search. Also subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one and don't forget to turn on notifications so you are notified when a video is posted and with all that aside guys let's get right into today's video okay guys so starting off with the custom tactics the defensive style i like to use balance this is because it gives you the greatest control of your defense where you're able to press when you need to press and you're able to be more conservative when you need to be so it does give you the very much needed balance some people like to use pressure tactics but i do suggest getting used to balance if you can that being said if you feel more comfortable using in pressure tactics then go right ahead now moving on to the defensive width I like to have this on 45 this is because it's still primarily narrow as FIFA 23 is a narrow game but we also still have a natural coverage of the wings uh, so it does help defend those cutbacks a little bit more even though they are inevitable in this game moving on to the depth guys I like to have this on 55 with this formation because I don't like to keep the defensive line super high but at the same time I don't want to get pinned back either so 55 puts your defensive line in a nice area where you can't get pinned back and you don't also get through balled either so moving on to build at play guys i have this on balance the reason for this is it is the most balanced it's pretty self-explanatory but it also suits you up for the most types of fifa 23 gameplay you can experience so whether the gameplay is fast slow fast and laggy you know there's so many different types of gameplay you'll experience it suits you up for all of them so balance is definitely the best in my opinion i do like fast build up but not when the gameplay is terrible. So moving on to chance creation, guys, I like to use direct passing. This is because it's the only setting which makes your attackers move in the correct way to break through that defensive line. It's very effective at creating those chances. I've also tried it out with forward runs, and I don't think this setting is terrible. I just think it can be a little bit too aggressive at times, and when you lose the ball, you can quite often find yourself getting counterattacked. That being said, I don't think it's an awful thing to use. So if you want to try out forward runs, go ahead but I kind of like using direct passing. Now moving on to the width, because this is a wider formation, it makes sense that we want to use a slightly wider width than we would with a narrow formation, because otherwise it will feel more like a 4-3-2-1 than a 4-3-3. So I like to have the width on 51, so our wingers are nice and spread out, we can really reach those wings, and it really allows us to utilize this formation to its strengths. Now moving on to players in box, I just have this on six, because I like to get some players into the box so we can create chances but at the same time I don't want to overcommit the entire team to the point where we get counter-attacked so I found a really good balance in having this on six. As for corners and free kicks I have these both on one because I don't really cross from set pieces anymore. I have a corner kick routine that you guys can check out in the top right hand corner of the screen uh, and it shows you how I take my corners and free kicks and it requires me to have these on one. Sorry to interrupt the video guys but I just wanted to show you guys about free cash. If you use my link in the top right hand corner of the screen and ensure you are using my code vital Rima FIFA when you sign up you are able to earn lots of money basically for doing nothing so you could play raid shadow legends and earn $80 you could uh, download TikTok and earn $2 or you can see what I've done is I've just made an account on tide and I've got 23,000 coins which is $23 so you can get coins basically for doing nothing and then you can cash it out in pretty much anywhere you want whether it be PayPal Bitcoin Litecoin uh, gift cards so there's lots of things you can do with it guys uh, and if you do use my code you will get three cases when you do sign up that is if you earn one dollar in which you can earn up to 250 dollars in each case so it is worth it i may earn a small commission off of your earnings but yeah it's very minor and obviously it does help support the channel so i just wanted to show you guys this if you are looking to earn some extra money and be sure to use my code vital rima fifa uh, yeah as that does support me greatly 
Now for the plays you want to use guys, in the striker position I suggest going for a nice well rounded striker. This is because we have to compensate for the fact that this is a one striker formation instead of two. So we have to get all that balance in one player opposed to two strikers. So I suggest going for a nice well rounded striker, somebody that can shoot on either foot, somebody that has some dribbling ability, somebody that can run, somebody that has a bit of physicality, even pass, basically someone that can do a bit of everything in this position. That being said, if you feel more comfortable using let's say a lengthy player that's just going to finish chances then that is absolutely fine now in the winger positions this is quite uh, self-explanatory but you're going to want to use those fast players you're going to want to use players that have skills if you can get it uh, agile players somebody that can cross shoot basically do a bit of everything in attack but it is important that these players are quick and creative players otherwise you're going to struggle with this formation as they're your main outlets in the team uh, moving on to the cam you're going to want a nice technical player somebody that's agile somebody that is able to pass shoot uh, it's important that you do find a cam that works for you because if you don't like the cam in your team you're going to find things fall apart because this is your main playmaker of the team so if you don't like the cam you're using you're going to struggle a lot so I do suggest experimenting until you find a cam that you like uh, because otherwise you might struggle a little bit now in the two center mid spots in the left center mid spot I like to go for a more defensive player somebody that's going to stay back and have defensive support and security so I use the flashback Jorginho so I go for somebody that has very good defensive stats somebody with a medium high work rate so they're more focused on their defensive game than their attacking game I really do enjoy having that if you can't get a medium high work rate just ensure that the player has really good defensive stats because the work rates are something you should aim for but it's not a complete necessity now in the right center mid spot I go for a more box to box midfielder this is somebody with very well rounded stats somebody that's going to be able to attack and defend to help us transition from the defense to the attack uh, and yeah I'm using the flashback Paul Pogba because he's got those very well-rounded stats if you can aim for it get a high high work rate so you get the maximum contribution in attack and defense but again like the left center mid if you can't get that perfect work rate just ensure that you are using the correct type of player in this position like I am now moving on to the left back and right back I like to go for a bit of a balance between the two where I have Roberto Carlos who is a bit more technical on the ball somebody that's a little bit better in the attacking game and then I have the right back who is a little bit more defensive and is sole purpose is to help us defend I just like to have that dynamic between the two fullbacks that being said if you want to have two attacking fullbacks or two defensive fullbacks that is completely fine and it's completely up to you as for the center backs and goalkeeper these just need to be as good as you can possibly get them now for the player instructions guys on the striker we have very basic instructions the only thing we change is stay central the reason we have him on stay central is because we need him in those central areas we've already got wide players so we don't need him covering those spaces we need him to stay central and we need him to be in that striking position especially since he is our only striker we don't just want to put this, put this player on getting behind because sometimes he'll feel a little bit disconnected from the rest of the team and by having him on mixed attack you'll notice the build up play in this formation is a lot better than it would be if this guy was just constantly running in behind so just stay central on the striker now for both wingers I actually just completely leave them alone so the right wing and left winger on default settings the reason for this is we don't want to restrict these players all that much we don't always want them to stay out wide we don't always want them to stay narrow because then it's like a 4-3-2-1 uh, we don't always want them to get into the box for cross sometimes we might want them to sit outside the box you know I kind of just like to leave these wingers alone so they've got a bit more freedom and we allow them to use uh, their talented abilities so wingers I just leave them alone as I notice it's a bit more free flowing in this formation now on the cam I like to have him on get into the box for cross and then we leave everything else alone we have him on get into the box for cross because sometimes you'll notice he doesn't get involved enough when we are attacking if you have him on balance crossing runs he'll be a little bit too conservative and we don't really want that so if we put him on get into the box for cross we're making sure that he is getting involved as much as possible uh, so yeah I do find this instruction to be super effective now for the left centre mid the more defensive midfielder we have stay back while attacking stay on the edge of the box cross and cover centre we have him on stay back while attacking because like I said he's a more defensive player so we don't need him to go forward we need him to stay back and help defend uh, we have him on stay on the edge of the box for cross because let's say he accidentally goes forward or we trigger a run forward with him we don't want him to commit all the way into the box because if we lose the ball we'll be in trouble 
double. So we have him on stay on the edge of the box across, so he's like an extra line of defense if we lose the ball. We also have him on cover center because we need him to cover those central areas. We don't need him to cover the wings as we already have two players on this side, those being Roberto Carlos and Di Maria. Now for the right center mid, the more box to box midfielder, we just have him on default settings and cover center. We have him on cover center for the same reason as the left center mid. We don't need him to cover those wings as we've already got Jairzinho and Cafu on this side. So we've already got enough players covering the wing and then we completely leave him alone because we don't want to restrict this player. We want him to attack and we want him to defend. So we don't want to restrict that. And you'll notice that your box to box midfielder does a lot more if you don't restrict his instruction. So it does work very well for the attack and defense. Now for the left back and right back, I have them both on stay back while attacking. The reason for this is with a wider formation like the 4-3-3, you don't always need to commit your fullbacks forward because the main reason I commit fullbacks forward is when I'm using a narrow formation and I need to get that extra width. In a formation like this, we already have the extra width, so we don't really need to worry about committing these players forward. So we can just leave them on stay back so we've got a bit more defensive security. That being said, if you want to put them on balanced attack, for example, because you want to commit more players forward, that is completely fine, but uh, I just leave them on stay back while attacking. As for the centre backs and goalkeeper, these are on default settings and we don't touch them at all. But yeah, guys, they're my custom tactics and player instructions for the 4334. If you guys have enjoyed or found this useful, I'd very much appreciate it if you could drop it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you are notified when a video is posted. And with all that aside, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll catch you all later. Peace.